Hi, my name is Bethany Sabowski. I am a registered nurse. As a former employee of Persis, um, I came on today to tell you about something that happened to me that was uh, quite <clears throat> terrifying to say the least. Uh, a few weeks ago, I'm outside of Nashville, Tennessee. We don't typically get snow here. So we had like this incredible snowstorm and our older boys wanted to um, go sledding and riding. Uh, so I happened to be with a medic and um, our neighbor. And so we were out in his field, like a big horse field. And, uh, and we had a big um, wide tube and uh, the boys were getting pulled on a quad. And so kind of like if you're skiing, they were holding onto a rope and, and you know, uh, water skiing. And like when they, you know, would turn a corner, they kind of got pulled wide. Well, I was sitting on a Polaris. So we were in this big empty field. Uh, someone was driving the quad and um, took the corner a little wide. And so um, she was yelling to uh, one of my 18 year olds, you know, bail, jump off. But he was so far in the tube, he couldn't. And the tube ran into the Polaris. Um, so it hit between this rod and this back wheel. And I was sitting on the Polaris. Um, so I didn't see them come around back of me. And I just got this big bang. And so of course I jump off and I look over and um, uh, Bailey was unconscious and profusely bleeding and his head was like to the side um, in between that, that wheel and the rod. Um, honestly, I didn't know if he was dead at first. He wasn't moving, he wasn't conscious. It was literally the worst moment in my life. Um, I had yelled to Jen, um, who was the, another medic that is a friend of mine, um, to go get the first aid stuff. So immediately did cease by precaution. I had, he had this huge gash on his head that he was profusely bleeding from. I'm not talking about a little bit, but you could just see it pooling into the snow. Um, so I had winter gloves on and I was holding it, but it was just seeping right through. So she had ran back and she had a um, blizzard blanket, um, but then she had these blue towels. Well, she handed me the blue towels. I put it on his head and immediately, I mean, it did not matter how much I was pressing because it was like right here on him that it was just pouring through uh, my gloves and through that. So I said, you know, hold pressure. I know where I have his Israeli bandage. So I ran to my, on my car because it was just across the street, grabbed it out. Uh, we were able to, um, you know, wrap his head. Uh, and it was something that typically, you know, I didn't practice being a trauma nurse in a hospital because we have unlimited resources, uh, but it was something that Leonid from Persis um, taught us that, you know what, it, even if you're not a first responder, you have to be an immediate responder. So I was so eternally grateful that he showed me how to wrap a head and, and stop that bleed. Uh, he had, it was probably four inch gash by two inch wide. It was, it was extensive. Um, and so we put that on him. Uh, we had EMS volunteers show up about five minutes in. So uh, they were able to put a C collar and we were able to safely log roll him onto a blizzard blanket because ultimately he was laying on snow, right? So he's, so now he's partially conscious, doesn't know what's going on. Uh, we're able to get him on the blizzard blanket and our uh, EMS time because of the roads and being out in the back country, it was 40 minutes. 40 minutes. So that if he didn't stay warm and if we didn't have something to stop that that bleed, we wouldn't have had such a good outcome. So even then EMS had a hard time getting their truck in to get it out. And we took him down a mile to uh, get him airlifted to Vanderbilt because he was a head trauma. Uh, gratefully, he was stable the entire time. His vitals stayed, you know, he was warm. Um, his bleeding had stopped. So, you know, he was admitted to their trauma bay and he was discharged about 24 hours after. So we are so lucky, but had we not had those um, things with us, it would not have been the same outcome. Uh, when EMS showed up, the volunteer EMS showed up, you know, they had some gauze and, and a little space blanket. And there was no way that that would have maintained his, his um, heat and would have been able to stop the blood. So immediately I called Persis after, and I was just like, thank you so much for teaching me that even though I'm not a first responder, and even though I am a nurse, I always need to be prepared to be an immediate responder because that was that was one of my kids' life, you know? He's like, he's not my child, but he's like one of my children who lives with me. And um, I would have been devastated had I not had all the tools I needed to save his life. 
So thank you, Persis.